Lesson 1. Measures of Central Tendency Average Let's calculate the average height for the data set. The average function can be used to find the average or arithmetic mean of a list of numbers. The result of the formula appears in the cell where the formula is entered. We can change the number of decimal places displayed. median. Let's calculate the mean and median of the data set. Building a frequency distribution chart. Let's use a pivot chart to group the data. Click the Insert tab. Click the Pivot Table drop down in the Tables group and choose Pivot Chart from the drop down list. When you choose a pivot chart, you automatically get a pivot table along with it. Enter the cell range. Click OK.
click the price field in the pivot table field list, and drag it into the axis fields area. Right click any cell that contains a row label and choose group from the shortcut menu. Calculating the mode. The formula returns the numeric value that occurs most frequently in specified range. Let's create pivot chart. The pivot chart provides the same information graphically. Notice that the mode returned by the function in cell C2 is the same value as the most frequently occurring value shown in the pivot chart.
Let's use pivot chart and find the mode of the nominal data. Identify the range that contains your raw data by dragging through it with your mouse pointer or by typing its range address. The mode is the only sensible measure of central tendency when you're working with nominal data such as category names. using an array formula to count the values. The formula is an array formula, and must be entered using the special keyboard sequence control shift enter. You can tell that a formula has been entered as an array formula if you see curly brackets around it in the formula box. Don't supply the curly brackets yourself. If you do, Excel interprets this as text, not as a formula.
using formula evaluation. Select a cell that contains a formula. Then start formula evaluation. You'll find it on the ribbons formulas tab, in the formula auditing group. Now, if you click evaluate, Excel begins evaluating the formula from the inside out and the display changes. Click evaluate again and you'll see the results of the test of A2 to A24 with C2. Click evaluate again and the window shows the results of the if function, which in this case replaces true with 1 and false with 0. A final click of evaluate shows you the final result, when the sum function totals the 1s and zeros to return a count of the number of instances of Olivia in A2 to A24. Do you want to learn new skills in the fastest and most effective way? Visit Learn with Video Tutorials com.